you're all loving all my like calligraphy workshop tips videos. So I thought I would make another one for you. Today, we are going to be talking about like how to actually teach a calligraphy workshop, like from like, you know, what should you actually teach if it's a brush lettering workshop? So I'm gonna walk you through what I usually do. And this works for like an in-person workshop and a virtual workshop. By the way, if you haven't checked out my tips video on how to host a virtual workshop, then check it out right here. Um, so first thing, even before the workshop starts, um, I just wanna remind you that it's kind of like good practice to email your participants like beforehand um, with like information about the workshop. If it's like in person or Zoom, like send the Zoom link, whatever. And then a day before the workshop, like remind them that there's a workshop happening the next day. Um, and then when you're actually teaching the workshop, so before I get into like any like teaching or anything, I usually want to make everybody feel welcomed in the workshop. So I give a little bit of an introduction. I usually ask two questions like, you know, like, um, you know, why do you want to learn calligraphy? And uh, can you just like introduce yourself? Like, you know, what, what do you want to do? I, I'm sorry, not what do you want to do. What do you do for work? or in your life, if you want to share. So then everybody gets to, gets like a chance to meet everybody else. That kind of like, just makes it feel a little bit more welcoming and like they're not just here to learn, but they can actually like make friends here. So at the very beginning, um, this is actually my first ever like uh, workbook that I made. So this is not the current one that I use, uh, but I wanted to show you because most of you watching have not made worksheets before. And I wanted to show you that in my worksheets, there are imperfections. Like your first workbook does not have to be perfect. It's okay if there are imperfections and that's why I wanted to use this first one. So right at the beginning, I give them a little, I give everybody like some guidance on what, like how to do calligraphy. So for example, forget everything you know about handwriting and cursive writing. Use heavy pressure on downstrokes and pressure and light pressure on upstrokes. Lift up after each stroke and like finish each letter at the midline. So things like that, give them some general guidelines. And then I move into the basic strokes. So here are the basic strokes. Um, I do like a demo for all of them. I, I do a demo like one by one and then I get them to do it just like one by one. The O, like these ones are the hardest, like the O's, the ovals for sure. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. Um, when I explain this page, I also explain how to hold the pen. Um, and if you're wondering how left-handed people should hold a brush pen, make sure you watch this video where I actually like teach left-handed people how to hold the pen. So make sure you check out that video. Okay. So after the basic strokes, what I did with my workbook, and I don't know if every, I don't know how like other people do this, but I thought what made sense is to make the workbook based on the basic strokes. So it says here, forming letters with the, with this, um, underturn shape and then the overturn and the compound curve. So I have like letters, for example, the I, the T, the U, these are letters that have this basic stroke and they use this shape. So I would do the demos for all of them. And then I would tell people to just do a couple of them and I, I would give them time to do it. So yeah, I have like a page for each of the basic strokes. And then after everybody does the basic strokes, then I say, congratulations, you've done all 26 letters of the alphabet. And then we move on to connecting letters together. Um, I know some people go right into um, like teaching words, going from single letters to teaching words, but I actually like to get people to practice like two, two letters together, just so it's like a one step. There's like one more step between the letters and like the words. So it's not super intimidating for them. So I do this, I have like pairs of letters. And then, oh yeah, another another tip is like the TH is kind of special, right? Like when you do the H. So that is something I specifically tell them and I show them like this is like a special one. And then after we do connecting letters, 
then that's when we will get into doing words. So we'll start off with words that aren't super duper long, like you and then love, like I have like very common words like ha happy, there's like hello. So there are words and people can trace the words if they want in the gray. And then after the words, I do show like some other variations of letters. So for example here, like I show, like this is the O that I teach and then I show them two more O's, two more O's. And then there are also like different ways to do S. And then something else you can include in your workbook is the entire alphabet. For most brush lettering workshops, like a beginner one, like the instructor doesn't have time to teach the entire like uh, uh, alphabet with the capital letters. So I just give everybody like the capital letters like here and say, it's the same rule. Like you, when you go up, it's thin. When you go down, it's thin. And if you, it's any other, like if it's going um, vertical, not vertical, sorry, horizontal. If it's going horizontal, then it's also thin. So it's like following the same rules, but I don't actually get them to practice this. I just give it to them. And then you have the lowercase letters. And then at the very end, I just, you can add like one blank sheet of paper with lines, or you, you can add multiple lines. I just have one um, because I find that in the workshop, like people usually don't even fill up one and there's like not enough time to practice like five pages afterwards. So I only have one. So that is how I, that is basically like how I structured my book. And by the way, if you are finding this video useful so far, I would love it if you took a screenshot of this video, if you added me on Instagram at Dina Calligraphy and you tag me in your stories. I really like it when my followers and subscribers uh, tag me and connect with me because I can get to know you more and then I can also feature you back and help you get a couple more followers. Now at the very end of the workshop, if it's like your first couple of workshops, you can collect feedback, just ask everybody, like, hey, how did you find the workshop? Like, and obviously like during the workshop, you'll see how people are progressing. Like you'll see how well they're doing with their calligraphy. So yeah, if you wanna collect feedback on the structure, you can ask people directly like after the workshop or you can email them with a form. I prefer just asking them in person. Like no one really likes doing forms. Or if you have a friend attending your workshop, you can always ask your friend after the workshop. Like privately. Yeah. Friends are always, friends are the best. Like they always want to support us. And then after the workshop, you can send a follow-up email. I usually do this like the day of, or like the day after with just like some general tips and, and like where to get supplies. So it's just kind of like an email where they can have like more information if they want to continue their calligraphy practice. And then you can also get them to like follow you on Instagram, like with the link. So I also do that as well. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to host a calligraphy workshop. Let me know in the comments. And also I have just released a course for calligraphers on how to host a calligraphy workshop. And so you can check it out. It's in the link in the description. And if you want to learn more and see uh, some other videos that I've made about workshops, then make sure you check out this video on my tips for hosting a virtual workshop. And then this one, a more general one on how to host a workshop. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.